Hi there, me, Michael, your friendly neighborhood humble service shelter. I apologize for the two-week absence. Um, last week, I had to travel to Toronto on Wednesday. Uh, Thursday and Friday, I was at the all-day neuropsychological, neuropsychiatric appointment. Um, and then came back Saturday. And the week and a half later, the world goes for a shit. Or attempts to take many, but runs out of toilet paper. So, um, I'm going to restart regularly scheduled programming next Wednesday with Wordy Wednesday. Um, this is about the pandemic and coronavirus. So, one, I've done a bit of research. And let's just be honest here. Even the experts are changing their models and their opinions every other day, it seems. Some of the information we're getting doesn't seem to be very congruent one minute to the next. So even there's uncertainty at the expert level. So for you and I that are just peons in the crowd, it gets frustrating and confusing. From the research I've done, whatever medication you're on shouldn't impact the coronavirus. I know initially people were saying that you shouldn't take certain anti-inflammatories or ibuprofen-based products or don't take this medication or don't take that medication. Again, I am not a doctor. I've only played one on TV. So what I'm not giving you is medical advice. For specific medical advice, go find the right doctor and hug them. Well, not right now, though. Um, maybe later, when this is all over. So everything I can see doesn't say anything... Um, about don't take this med or don't take that med. If you have specific medication questions, start with your local pharmacist or chemist, uh, and then move to the appropriate level of doctor, be it psychologist, psychiatrist, neurologist, general practitioner, cardiologist, whatever. Get their opinion. Um, uh, now, let's just talk about what actually is going on in the world, other than people hoarding toilet paper. Um, and some people seem to think that bleach and cocaine will help fix this problem. So, we're going to look at this in a bit of a historical perspective. Every hundred years or so, there is a pandemic, right? That's just the reality of the situation. Uh, you know, the Black Death, bubonic plague, uh, Spanish influenza, right? That was 1917 to 1925. Now, the Spanish influenza actually wasn't the Spanish influenza. There's a reason why they call it the Spanish flu or Spanish influenza. So World War One's going on between 19, uh, um, 1914 and 1918, right? Yeah, that sounds right, yeah. So around 1917, the British, the French, the Canadians, the Belgians, uh, the Americans, the troops on the line were muling and puking themselves in the trenches. They didn't report it in any of the newspapers, and it was kept a national secret because we didn't want the German forces and their allies to know that we are muling and puking ourselves in the trenches so they could just march on up and go, oh, look, for you, comrade, the war is over, right? However, the Germans and their allies were doing the exact same thing, muling and puking themselves, and didn't want the British to march over, oh, cheerio, oh, I see you happen to be quite distempered, please surrender, right? No one wanted to give the other side the advantage. So the reason why we call it the Spanish flu is because the first newspaper in Europe to report about it was in Spain. Now, let's fast forward to about 19, some place between 1955 and 1962. We started a massive um, public health campaign for vaccination. So diseases, hey, it's Crash the Wonderbird, everyone. Hey, Crash, how's it going, buddy? So, don't give me the bird flu. No bird flu. No sneezing. Um, so between 19, say, 55 and 1962, they started a massive public vaccination program for things like scarlet fever, um, yellow fever, measles, polio. You know, diseases that used to decimate a town and diseases that used to just destroy a family. Well, luckily, because we've been vaccinating we've eradicated most of these diseases like diseases like measles used to go through a school and 10 percent of the school would die you know polio right now most of you might not know this but fdr franklin delano roosevelt 
was the president of the United States of America during World War II. He was also extremely handicapped because of polio, but he tried to live his life in a way so that you'd have no idea he was a polio uh, patient, polio survivor. So historically right now, we don't have a lot of experience with diseases like this. However, historically we do, right? Historically, the treatment for pandemics such as this has been isolation and containment. Right? Even during the Spanish flu, until they could get an appropriate vaccine and medical treatments, they were mandating and quarantining families and, and, and in large amounts of people. They were isolating you know, and, and containing. So if we can keep the number of people sick to a very small amount, we can basically slow this thing down, right? And we can get ahead and we can start to make um, like a fire break, if you will, during like a forest fire. So I understand right now it is a very stressful time. I understand right now it's a very confusing time. I understand right now that a lot of us are just scratching our heads and going, what the fuck? And I'm not exempt from that. Um, you know, when people are hoarding things like toilet paper or hand sanitizer uh, or, um, you know, any any form of protective product, right? People that are buying these face masks that have, A, no idea how to properly wear one, or B, are wearing an N95 mask without being clean shaven. Fun fact, N95 masks only work under two conditions. One, you've been properly fitted and trained how to wear it. And two, you're clean shaven. So if you got any of that stubbly stubbly, yeah, your N95 mask is essentially useless. So if you think you've come into a compromising situation with COVID-19, coronavirus, whatever you want to call it, right? please self-quarantine. Do not take the risk of leaving your place of residence. Have your groceries delivered. Have your things delivered. Friends, family, businesses, whatever. Right? Do what you can to isolate yourself from the rest of the community. Now, right now, they're saying a two-week model. That's what the experts say. Um, I honestly don't have an opinion about that because I'm not a doctor. Um, if I did have an opinion about that, I would say double that, 28 days. Not that this is going to become a zombie movie, because, well, that's how they start, isn't it? Isn't it? Think about it. Not, no, no zombies. So, just practice a bit of common sense. Wash your hands regularly. Monitor yourself. Monitor your friends and family that are immediately around you. Limit your social interaction and social exposure. Even though the kids aren't in school, this isn't the time to everyone have a play date. No, nobody, no play dates. Um, you know, even though you're not going to work regularly, this isn't the time to go over and visit your buddies and have a, you know, a drunk up, things like that. That's that's not this time, right? This is the time for restraint and and some self accountability and some self responsibility. Um, I realize that people are now stuck at home because school schools have closed, businesses have closed. This is, in some cases, unchartered, unnavigated ground. No one's done a survey on this one yet. So we're on a map and we don't know where we are. That being said, what we need to do is just suck it up. And it sucks, right? Especially for those of you out there that have been going to physiotherapy regularly, they're going to occupational therapy regularly, they're going, getting out of the house for speech and language therapy regularly, and now your, visit is, your visits or your sessions have been curtailed, um, or they've been limited, uh, or the institution you're going, going to has unfortunately had to shut down due to potential contamination or whatnot. Um, I understand for those of us that have recently come home from the hospital, and have just had your stroke, you know, you were wanting to get out to your appointments. Uh, you were wanting to get out to um, start your therapy. And, and I understand how difficult that can be. I had to wait about three-ish weeks, I think, until I had my first physiotherapy appointment after my stroke. And I, I know how difficult that is because you want to get out there and you want to do it. Um, 
and the weather's getting better too. So like the snow is leaving and the temperatures are getting better. So we all were ready to get out and start doing our spring summer activities. I was one of those. Um, I had an event scheduled this weekend that I was supposed to go to. Unfortunately, that has been kiboshed due to the pandemic. And, and I know this is, is frustrating, right? Um, but all I can ask is if you decide to make a rash medical decision, do it with the appropriate level of medical advice, right? There is no potion, lotion, cream, salve. Um, I have heard things being touted as a potential cure for the coronavirus that are just ridiculous. Um, like bleach and cocaine. Or uh, while I was shopping uh, in the grocery store, I was listening to a podcast and someone was advocating taking a, a hair dryer and blowing it up your nose and that will kill the coronavirus. Um, then you have the medical charlatans or religious charlatans like Jim Baker and Silver Solution or um, those purporting um, industrial bleach, MMS, right? This isn't something you're going to be able to rub a lotion, potion, a cream or salve on your skin and it's going to disappear because it's not the coronavirus living nasally that is the issue, right? That's merely an indicator that you've been potentially exposed to coronavirus. It's the coronavirus that lives in your lung um, or lungs, for those of you that have, like the two, right? Um, um, your lung eye. Hey, buddy, how's it going? Right? Um, right now, if the coronavirus is in your lungs, it's going to rapidly replicate. And that is what's going to cause you a uh, significant medical distress. So... Please keep yourself safe. Keep those around you safe. Please do everything you can to limit your social interactions. Um, you know, and I'm not suggesting anyone needs to become OCD and start washing in Lysol or, you know, things like that. Just practice normal common sense. Wash your hands when you come in from the outside. Um, you may want to, uh, with canned goods or whatnot, wash them, wipe them down with... Uh, something. Lysol wipes, they're not going to kill this, right? So the whole, I'm going to put Lysol on everything, that's not going to kill this. You're going to need a, something, a, something more, um, of, of higher strength, right? And I, I don't know what that is. I'm not a cleaner. I've never even played one on TV. So all I'm going to suggest is just please practice common sense. Don't hoard things like toilet paper or groceries because, you know, who goes and buys a thousand dollars worth of meat uh, or that guy in British Columbia who bought seventy thousand dollars worth of toilet paper, Lysol and wipes and things at a Costco and then got publicly shamed because he was selling it for a profit. Think about that. He walks into Costco and drops seventy thousand Canadian dollars, roughly fifty two thousand American for toilet paper and Lysol wipes and whatever else. But <clears throat> I will start the regularly regularly broadcast content, probably do an episode tomorrow, um, and then I'll start again with Wordy Wednesday again next week. I do apologize for the absence. Unfortunately, life kind of caught up with me, and then the psych assessment was, was just there. Um, and we'll discuss a bit about my experience at the psych assessment. Uh, also, maybe do a, an episode about my PTSD counseling, sort of what that experience was like, because that has ended. And I've, I've ended the formative portion of the counseling, and I now have two booster sessions left over. Unfortunately, the coronavirus has kind of put a damper on that. But that is what it is, right? So please, again, self-isolate, self-contain, self-monitor, self-regulate. If you genuinely feel the need to go to the hospital, right, please go to the hospital. Uh, if you need to go to a local Corona assessment center, please go to the local Corona assessment center. But don't try like, I'll just sneak to the store real quick or I'll sneak there real quick. Um, because that could be, could potentially be placing more than just you at risk. It could be placing others at risk that didn't sign up for the put me at risk kind of thing. <clears throat> so until then, please only sneeze on yourself, not on your loved ones. Um, uh, sneezing in the armpit is not as effective as sneezing down your shirt like this. I worked in a food processing plant, and we were told never sneeze on your armpit. If you want to contain the sneeze, open your shirt. 
<coughs> right? Um, that, that, that'll trap everything on your body. Um, it, it feels disgusting, especially you get like a big honking loogie, kind of like a little, little snot slug like going up moving on. So on that note, please, everyone, just have a good day. Take care of yourself. If you like what you've been watching, uh, please like, share, subscribe. Um, if you know anyone that's going through a stroke or going through, or a brain injury or going or going through the assistance of a loved one going through a stroke or a brain in, in injury, please point the channel out to them. They might get some uh, genuine benefit of the content I generate. And if you happen to see either in yourself or someone around you the signs and symptoms of a stroke, I haven't done this in a while, so let me see if I can remember this one. Um, that being so, someone who appears to be immediately befuddled, confused, or has lost their sense of balance. Someone has vision problems. They can't see it in one eye. They only see in grayscale. They only see it a lot dot in the world. They can't move their eyes like in a certain direction. Someone who has facial droop. There's a noticeable and visual, vi vis vis visible slackening of the facial muscles. Someone who can't raise both arms equally effectively or at all. Someone who has slurred, stuttering speech, inappropriate language for situation or context. You cannot understand speech, right? Um, someone who can't smile equally effectively or at all. Um, someone has general body weakness, weakness on one side, or has the inability to stand unaided. Please immediately place that person in a position of comfort and dial 911. Something so simple can save a life.